For nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Nothing can satisfy the longing in your soul except a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And God the Father realized by the fullness of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Period. Period. Nothing else can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup. They won't one dry, won't, won't, won't one, won't, won't one, won't one. Um, Jesus said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? We need to get focused on what is it? Let me, I might have to look in my phone, but Brother Reuben, you sent me a text, and y'all probably seen this because uh, um, if I see anything on Facebook, it's because someone sees it on fake, Facebook and texts it to me. I'm not anti-Facebook, but I'd rather seek his face. <laughs> uh huh? Right? I'd rather seek his face. Facebook can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. Some people forward me a lot of good stuff off Facebook. But it says, I think, Reuben, you've said it to me two or three times. It says, you have heard it said that life is short. You better enjoy it. But I say eternity is long. You better prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Think about that. Life is short. You better enjoy it. How about eternity is long? You better prepare for it. How many know that Jesus came to bring heaven to earth? There's a song that I've been listening to lately that says, uh, Jesus, I won't try to sing it because then we'd have half the people would leave. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. His presence, the manifest presence of God is heaven to us. You can experience heaven on earth. If you're, if hopefully you're feeling good and don't have any things that's distracting you because right now, if you're spiritually in a good spot and you're sensing his presence, heaven is in this room right now. Heaven has come down. He said, I inhabit the praises of my people. <sighs> Take a big breath. Breathe in some, breathe in some God. Hope Aiden took a bath. He took a big old. <sighs> if that wasn't God, that was just Aiden. Okay. And he doesn't mind if we joke around and have fun. I, I heard that, that merry heart doeth good like a medicine. How do you know that laughter is a good thing? Okay. So I really do need to go. People are waiting on me up there. How do I even begin? I've got five sermons this week, one every morning. And so six long, good stuff. I guess they were for me. And so come, Saturday, come Sunday morning, I'm like, okay, Lord, you get, I got six, six messages. I need to have one for this morning. Let me look. Okay. So. Can you, so I had a, I'm going to take about 15 or 20 minutes and I have to go and then the prayer team's going to come up to pray for you if there's any needs. I'm, I'm really, really believing that many needs were met while ago. Just reach out and claim it because we're standing. And I want to say one other thing. Victoria and Jojo, y'all bless my heart. Isn't it, isn't it amazing when you see young people worshiping God unashamed, not holding back, could care less what the people around them think? Huh? Huh? Yeah. 
We older people should take a, get, take a lesson from them. Anyway. So, I got to go to uh, Mateo Calisi. Y'all know Brother Mateo. He's the charismatic uh, Catholic born-again child of God through faith in Jesus Christ who also is filled with the Holy Spirit. So I got to go to his conference last week. And Brother Copeland preached. I got to, you know, it was really cool. He was, I told everyone Sunday morning, Brother Copeland preached Saturday night and he stood right here when he was preaching and me and a, a black bishop from Dallas who's one of my new buddies, we're the amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So he spent about 30 minutes apiece. Come sit on the front row, Jojo, for me for just a second. I don't know if you know Brother Copeland, but he's like any preacher. If he, if he senses some life in the room, he'll go towards it. Huh? I know it's easy to preach when you have someone that smiles and saying, come on, brother, amen, yeah, 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 instead of just. But I, I was, you know, but I was excited. Half the time, Brother Copeland was right here. That's me. I'm Brother Copeland. <laughs> I just like, oh, thank you, Lord. Ain't that right, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. 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 He'd preach a little while. It kind of a little bit dead, you know. They were listening, but he, I'm gonna come back over here, y'all too, right here, you know. And he'd preach a little bit, and he'd say something. He'd like, <laughs> he just, you know. So it was like I was like in heaven. It was like heaven. It was awesome. And so we got to catch for him. He prayed for people. Got to catch for him, and uh, never got to really have a conversation with him. But he was a. Uh, when everything was done, he was a. Uh, uh, I was standing over there, just kind of, just watching everything. And he said his guys told him, "Okay, brother Copeland, it's time to go." And so he walks off, and he takes about two steps, and he turns back, and he looks right at me. He goes, oh, I love you. <laughs> I, I love you too, sir. <laughs> so I was like, huh? Someone said, did you talk to him? Not really. <laughs> Told me he loved me. Preached to me. Kind of, yeah, kind of, sort of. <laughs> but that was not the highlight of my, of my trip. It was awesome. I, I want to go back again next year. Um, pray for me. Can y'all? I don't really request prayer prayer a lot, but I want to be. Uh, I want to say the right things in the next ten minutes. So stretch your hands towards me. Right. Just pray for me that I don't say anything that's offensive or blah blah blah. I just want to. I'm not worried about being politically correct. Y'all know me better than that. But I just want to say the right things. Don't want to hurt anybody. Any other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Don't want to hurt anyone. Okay. Thank you. I receive their prayers. Put a guard over my mouth, Father. Let only your words come, come out of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. I should pray that prayer all the time, not just on Sunday mornings, right? So should you. <laughs> I got to tell you something real quick, and I'm going to get focused. So I was meditating yesterday, and the Lord said to me, it's not... You can have what you say. How many of you heard you can, have, you can have what you say? He's like, that's not it at all. It's not you can have what you say. He said, it's you will have what you say. It's not something that, well, though, some of those people over there claim you can know. The Bible said, right? It's not you can. It's you will. How about this? Think about this. How, what happens when someone gets arrested? Uh, is it the Miranda? I don't know. I'm very uneducated. Is it the Miranda right? You have the, you have the right to remain silent. Is that it? Is that, is that, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I say to you this morning, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Anything you can will, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. The courts of heaven. The accuser of the brethren. Come on, y'all listening to me? You have the right to remain silent. What do you do when you get a little bit upset in somebody? You have the right to remain silent. 
What do you do when you come into a conversation and everybody's gossiping about somebody and I got some juicy piece of information about Lynn that they don't know? I have the right to remain silent. You don't have to say something just because the devil's putting pressure on you. To What if you're feeling symptoms in your body and you're wanting to tell everybody about them? You have the right to remain silent because... What you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Why is, he, why is this sickness put him? Well, he said he was taking a cold. I'll back on back up over here. It's not you can have what you say. It is you will have what you say. And I want to remind you of your rights as a man and woman of God. You have the right to remain silent. Huh? Because anything you say can and be will used against you unless you repent. What happens if you repent? He forgives us, washes us, cleanses us. Bottom line is pretty important. Pretty important. Maybe know your mouth is pretty important. That's another message for another day, but I had to throw that out there to you. Can you get me some more water? I've all of a sudden got really dry. I need some more Jesus because he's the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup. It's not my spirit that's dry. It's my mouth. Amen. My mouth got dry. So, the highlight of my trip. Hey, there's a big bottle in my, a big, big bottle in my, in the, in the little refrigerator in there. Thank you. So, the highlight of my trip was I got to hang out with Father George Thomas Montague. 90 year old, highly educated, still is a professor at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas, teaching the book of Matthew. Uh, back there would be great, thank you Chico. At, at, at uh, three hours twice a week in San Antonio, 90 years old. Loves the Lord with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength, and his neighbor as himself. Amazing man. Amazing. And I spent Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and hauled him around, took him to his room, picked him up, brought, drove him. He flew up there, picked him up at the airport in San Antonio. I mean, San Antonio, uh, Love Field in Dallas. Drove him back. On our drive back, I learned that, see, at 30, he got filled with the Holy Spirit when he was 39. Well, answered the call to, to become a, a priest at the age of, he knew at 14, answered the call at 16. Um, told me a story, a great story. I'm going to have him come to share with y'all. It's just going to take a little while. It takes a little while to get things like, like that lined out through the, through the, through the system. Uh, but he submitted to it, never complained about it. Just amazing. Just, just loves the Lord. And uh, is it okay if I put my hand on you? Okay. I don't know why. Something going on here. So, um, so we, um, I, he told me, he gave his testimony, and he sang a couple little songs for us. And I mean, like, they were like drinking songs. If y'all don't understand what I'm talking about, it says, you know, how many know when, they, when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost? What did Peter say? These people are not drunk as you suppose. They're just very, very filled with the Holy Ghost. So what did he say? He said, he didn't say they weren't drunk. He said, they're not drunk as you suppose. Right? So how many of you know that when you get feel very, very, very filled with the Holy Spirit, it can have, they can have a sense of intoxication. How many of you know that? The new wine. And so he started singing these songs, and all of a sudden I realized, man, he's, he's got it going on. And so on the way home, as we're going around Austin on the toll road, we started singing those songs, and we got about half tipsy. <laughs> Father George and I did. It was amazing. And so, uh, 90 years old, and I got to thinking. So he's obviously when, uh, of just how how blessed he was and how from the outside, uh, outside looking in, 
I looked at his life. He, he, he owns a car. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't, obviously, he's a priest. He's not married. He doesn't have children. He has no, you know, no one to leave. And, and he no, has no heirs. Um, didn't have much at all. But had everything. Had everything. And then I got to thinking about how we go get to pursuing things. And then we find out that when we get the things, those things don't satisfy. Nothing in this world can satisfy. I'm trying to sing. I shouldn't have done that. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Huh? I'm not ashamed. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You want me to sing some more? <laughs> right? So, so my point being... I was majorly impacted by him, and he had such a testimony that he said, you know, I was just living a ho-hum life. He said, when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, he said, I received power that I didn't know was available. A new song, a new power, a new strength, a new purpose for living. That was 50 years ago. And he still has a zeal for life. He still has a love for me. He, he was, he, he, anyway. So he impacted my life. And I'm going to stay in touch with Father George. And uh, I'm just here to tell you that. Well, let's put up. Okay, I'll just let me share this. I have a message. I guess I'll still have a message next week. <clears throat> Lamentations 3. 21, 22. 23, Lamentations 3.23. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I met Father. I'm so glad I met y'all. I know y'all Y'all are awesome. Y'all are good sheep. What makes a good pastor? What makes a good pastor? Good sheep. What makes a bad pastor? Bad sheep. Huh? Come on. Before you start complaining about your pastor... I look in the mirror. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The next verse says, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Y'all see that? The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. I met a man that said the Lord was his portion. The Lord was his inheritance. And he knew that he had found, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with things, having things, right? But if you think having those things are going to satisfy you, I can tell you right now, it's, they're not, right? I've been broke and I've had money and I've just been just as happy broke as I had, huh? Money's not it, y'all. I'm going to tell you right now, a relationship with the Lord, nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup, that won't run dry. Can you put up Father George's song? I'm going to teach y'all a song. Can we, can we do it? Y'all, it's going to be great. Y'all going to love this. 90 years old. Sitting in the, his little house in San Antonio, and I got my phone out and filmed him. It takes us a second. Sure, okay. Okay. There you go. All right. You don't have to be your empty water pot. All you have to be is mine. You don't have to feel your own emptiness. You can be filled with wine. How long have you sat in that dusty corner there, yearning for the dancing floor? You can sing a song and dance the wedding dance. Just look who walked in the door. <laughs> you don't have to be your empty water pot. All you have to be is mine. You don't have to feel your own emptiness. You can be filled with wine. 
Well, the old wine's running out and the guests are pouring in. What will they do for wine? All that Jesus needs is an empty water pot. He'll turn your water into wine. Yeah. You don't have to be your empty water pot. All you have to be is mine. You don't have to feel your own emptiness. You can be filled with wine. Oh, let him fill you up, yes, up unto the brim, and let the host their taste say, wow. <laughs> the empty pot has cheered the Lord's own wedding feast, the best wine he has saved till now. You don't have to be your empty water pot, all you have to be is mine. You don't have to feel your own emptiness. You can be filled with, you can be thrilled with, you can be filled with wine. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's more, but isn't that cool? Huh? What is the purpose of being filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Most drunk people are pretty happy. Some of them will get mad, get mean and fight, but most drunks are happy drunks. I had someone from the church the other day you know, having a fit and trying to, how many of you know that when someone's mad at, they try to shock you and they're like, I'm just going to go home and get drunk. I'm like, well, I hope you're a happy drunk. <laughs> that was the advice that I gave one of my sheep. <laughs> what? She said she was going to do it. Well, I hope you're a happy drunk. She was wanting me to, oh, it was a she. Now you got it narrowed down. It was Lindsay. <laughs> it was not Lindsay. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can be filled with wine. Right. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to, I got to go. I can't wait till the next time I preach. I got a lot of good stuff. How many of you know that God's got more for you? Life is not as complicated as we make it. Get up in the morning, start your day with the Lord, let him fill you. Right? How many of you know that he says you don't have to be an empty water pot? You can be filled with wine. Isn't that cool? Wine. And he saved the best wine for now. Get up, start your day. Read your Bible till you get happy. Let him fill you up. Get some joy. Get something going on. Get a little bit of something. Stir it up. Stir up the gift of God that's within. You've got is invested. All of heaven has been invested into you. You have everything that you need to be as joyful and happy and as blessed and prosperous, as healed as anyone. You just got to make the decisions. You're going to get up and stir it up and let him fill you up. And when you want to complain, shut up. You have the right to remain silent. Come on. We need to exercise our rights. We have rights as Christians. Okay. It's kind of small. And if I make it very big. She sent this to me about three or four months ago, maybe even five. And the question is this. Will you wake up early? Psalm 63, 1. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Right? Hang on. You think Paul, I mean, David knew a little something about God? Huh? Oh, that, that thing was full. I'm just running down my face. Y'all can tell I didn't go to seminary. The Bible is full of references to God's prophets and saints rising early to pray or hear God's voice. God is notorious for waking his followers early in the morning to give them instructions, insights, or warnings. 
Those who seek to be used of God must be willing to rise up early. Soldiers are ever alert and ready to respond to orders. The bugle blows early because battles are won through the preparations done in the early hours of the day. Are y'all listening to me? Especially spiritual battles. Learn to love the dawn, for there is power in the rising of the S-O-N sun. Right? So, I'll read one verse to you. And I have to combine all six messages into another one for next week. 2 Timothy 1.6. So this is what the Lord says to, to Timothy. How many of Timothy was, y'all know much about Timothy? Timothy was in a bad place. They were murdering Christians after the pastors. He was a pastor in Ephesus, and it wasn't good what was going on around him. Second Timothy 1.6, I'm sorry. So Paul, so did, so did Paul, what, what kind of advice did Paul give Timothy? Hide. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they're doing that. You, you, you should be, right? He says, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. <laughs> what? How I many know he was feeling sorry? Probably having a thorn and sucker in the dirt and feeling sorry. Paul said, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Right? When you're having a, uh, when you're getting, when the enemy attacks, that, well, what is my advice? Y'all, I get quite a few texts for me to pray for y'all. And if y'all knew what I was praying for y'all, y'all probably would quit sending me texts to pray for you. <laughs> I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you to stand up on your feet. Understand the authority that you have in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift of God that's within you. What would you have done back in the day before they had cell phones? The pastor, please. And I'm not making fun of anybody. Please don't. Right. We need, right, because there's, there's time for that. There's time for that. But what we need to do is learn to stir up the gift of God which is in us. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hello? What, what do you, they didn't have cell phones to text people to pray. They were out there, right? How about David? What am I want? I'm expecting you as sons and daughters of God to grow up, rise up, learn how to stand on your own spiritual feet. Stir up the gift of God that's within you every single morning. Quit being a whiny baby. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Come on. How about David? Y'all know the story of David? When he was, you're being kind of rough, Pastor. Paul was pretty rough with Timothy. Okay, so we know the story. Let's go to second. First Samuel 30. I still love y'all. Y'all love me? Huh? How many warriors do we got? How many overcomers? How many of you know, man, you get in the pr- you can do all things through Christ who's strength. I can do I like someone that's gonna challenge me and not just pat me on the back. It's okay, it's okay to be all right. And all those things are true, but you better get up and do your part. Uh, let's go to verse. Okay, let's, let's read this. Let's go to this. I'm going to leave at 12 now instead of 1130. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. The men were off. The enemy came and did this to their town. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Is that time to cry and have, right? Duh. Has anybody faced anything quite like this before? 
It's been close. I'm saying you've had some. I'm not saying you haven't faced some things in your life. This is pretty bad. Right? That the David and the people who were with them, him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Crying didn't get, bring God on the scene. Hello. Now, David was greatly distressed for people spoke of stoning him. How many of you know it's time to get distressed? They're going to kill me, stone me, kill me. Because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Look, put the King James up. How many know it was greatly distressed, huh? What it, would you be distressed? I would be distressed if all of y'all got mad at what I was preaching and said, we're going to kill you. Right? I would start texting, please pray for me, Pastor Phyllis. They're fixing to kill me. I'm going to kill you too. She, oh, my God. Right? So who did he have to text? Who did he have to call to pray for him? He's fixing to die. Graveyard dead. And what, happened, what did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. Who encouraged? He encouraged himself in the Lord. He knew the promises of God. He knew that he had authority. He knew what to do. So what did he do? We won't look at it. He put on his priestly garments, got into the presence of, the, of God. Well, let's look at it. Verse 7. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither. We're still on the King James, and that's okay. The ephod. And Abiathar brought Tither the ephod to David. That's why I read the New King James. Next verse. Hither and tither. Eight. So David, and, so what? He put on his priestly garments. He got into the presence of God. Right? Did he not? Hello? Got into the presence of God and asked God, shall I pursue them? Shall I overtake them? He said, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Now, if he wouldn't have encouraged himself in the Lord, David would be dead, stoned, died, right? Thank God the Holy Spirit got through to him. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He stood on his feet. God showed up. God told him what to do. I've heard from the Lord. Let's go get him. So they went from stoning him to going with him and recovered all. Is that not a good story? Why can't we do that? He expects it of us. Right? He expects it of us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to quit whining and complaining. I'm going to get up in the morning, stir up my, my most holy faith. I'm going to pursue. I'm going to overtake. I'm going to get back everything the enemy stole. We're taking South Texas for Jesus. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord all the days of our lives with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The devil's not going to steal, kill, or destroy anything that he's blessed me with. He's given his angels charge over me. Keep me in all my ways for all my days. And for that, I'm going to give him all my praise thank you Jesus hallelujah come on see I'm not asking y'all to do something in theory I do this on a daily basis aren't you glad to know that your, that your pastor isn't a whining complaining feeling sorry for you I don't know what you're good they try to say the, the, the world the seminary try to say well David it's okay to be okay I'm gonna stop right there I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Thank you, Jesus. I have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Exercising that right. Hallelujah. I love you guys. It's time for us to rise up, be the church, be the overcomers that he called us to be. Understand that Satan is defeated. He's under our feet. Quit talking about the devil and start talking to him. You shouldn't be surprised if you're under attack. That's what he does. Attack back. Huh? And praise is one of the... In his presence. Okay. All right. I'm going to say this. 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit is something that God has given us. You can get to heaven without it, without being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and the other nine gifts that come with it. The only, but but you're, you're not fully equipped for what God has for you without yielding to the baptism. Brother, Father George, perfect example. He's like, oh, I found power. I didn't know I could. And he said, it changed me. I mean, he just, I got, ah, right? Amazing. So a 90-year-old man, bless my soul. He has everything. But if he was to look, he'd say, he has nothing. But he has everything. Huh? He has everything. You, you, you think about that. What's your, what do you, there's nothing wrong with having things. You're blessed to be a blessing. We need money to build this church, build the kingdom of God. Blah, 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 but don't, don't, get, don't put your happiness in that. Huh? Okay. So a 90-year-old man changed my life. You know what? I got to share this. And ooh, I feel the anointing. I love y'all. I just love y'all. I do. I really do. You're like, well, that's a fine way of showing it. I expect, I expect, God expects something out of me, and I expect a lot out of y'all. Y'all are good sheep. We're a big people with a big vision, and I expect a lot out of y'all. God expects a lot out of y'all because he's got a big investment in you. He's invested everything in you. Thank you for being part of our service today. We pray that you had a blessed time. Please take time to connect with us online at connect at christianfaithcenter.church and be sure to mention your prayer request. We would love to hear from you. You can also check out our website at www.christianfaithcenter.church for more information on any upcoming events. On Facebook, you can find us as Christian Faith Center Dilly, Texas. Hope you will join us next week for a great time in the Lord. God bless.